What's up guys and welcome back to The Realistic Rumor. This is episode number 46 and well we're coming off the back of a pretty positive episode. Three wins from three in all competitions. We beat Aston Villa to secure our place in the Carabao Cup semi-finals. We also had our first back-to-back -back league wins of the season against West Brom and Everton. So hopefully turning a corner as we look at the FA Cup third round draw. We face Everton uh, and like I said in the last, uh, you would have seen the last episode as well, we beat Villa to get uh, to the Carabao Cup semi-finals, who we face Crystal Palace in a two-legged affair. A very, very good chance for us to reach the Carabao Cup final. The stage we we fell at the semi-finals last, se uh, last season, uh, losing to Leeds, who were event the eventual winners. So, you know, can't argue against that. Anyway, we reject a couple of offers um, early doors. Nico Williams bid from Arsenal. Um, I'm not selling Nico Williams. He's my starting right back, and we have two Nico Williams, so uh, that's not changing. And uh, Maxime Lopez, we re reject the bid from Napoli for him. Now, uh, Bayer Leverkusen came in for Tyro Awonyi, and obviously Leverkusen, we knocked them out of Group A in the Champions League. I rejected this bid, but obviously, as you know, we're, we're struggling in the league this season, and I think if I don't finish in the top four, come the summer transfer window, I have to start listening to these offers. We did it in season one, I think it was. Um, we sat down with Barcelona, couldn't agree a fee with Xavi for um, for a one year, so uh, it never materialised. But if I finish, I have in Champions League season, uh, Champions League football last season. Oh, uh, sorry, this season. If we don't get it again next season, I will have to listen to the offers for my big players because they deserve to be in uh, big teams. But we hope that we can turn that around. It's going to be quite difficult to reach the top four, but I do believe you have to just find some form and that's what we've found right now. Anyway, heading to the first game of the episode, it is Fulham away at Craven Cottage. And as you would have seen, we've had a couple early chances. A one year also hitting the post. Um, Maguire hitting the bar. This was a frustrating game for sure. Um, Fulham, who are sat in 17th, only five wins from their 20 games. They got 21 points total, to be fair saying that. We've only got six wins total. Um, it was a frustrating game uh, that first half in particular. We hit the woodwork three times. We would have seen Leno tipped a shot onto the post as well. Going into the second half, Bereton Diaz did give us the lead. Syankov hitting the byline and then kind of back to the Chilean who has been a brilliant step in for um, Isaac. Honestly, I've hardly noticed the uh, Swedes' uh, absence because Bereton Diaz has just been quality recently. Definitely earned his place in the side. Uh, well, 62, 63 minutes in, Fulham would get an equaliser. It would be the sub, uh, Romero, and uh, we would be level uh, level pegging. And then with 20 minutes to go, somehow we're 2-1 down in this game. A game that we've absolutely dominated, created loads of chances, hit the woodwork multiple times, scored one goal. Once again, it's the story of our season. We don't take our chances. And all of a sudden, Fulham have turned it around and we're 2-1 down and we're chasing this game. We almost, uh, the, the same two almost uh, combine again. So I think after the byline, Bereton Diaz, um, but his he has to, he decides to take a touch before shooting and the defender uh, closes him down and blocks the shot. But Taiwo Awonyi, the main man, would equalise with a brilliant first-time finish. A uh, nice ball from Johnson. Look at that angle. Absolutely love it from Awonyi. He is our hero with six minutes to go. Uh, Fulham would have a chance to win it very, very late on. Henderson would have to come up with a big save. The Fulham's second goal from Pereira, although it was a nice strike, it wasn't completely in the corner, and I think Henderson could have done better. I might just be being picky, but I wasn't particularly happy with his performance um, for that goal. He definitely made up for it there with that huge save uh, in the last couple of minutes. And then we couldn't create anything in injury time, and we would come away from Craig Codge with a point, and it's definitely two points dropped. Considering Fulham's position and considering we create so many chances and didn't take them, um, our game management was very poor, um, especially when we did lead. We went one up and we did not manage the game well. Fulham scored twice in about 15 minutes and we were chasing the game. Um, so definitely two points dropped there. Uh, we remain 13th, but uh, lose a bit of ground on the teams above us. Um, I think a win there would have pushed us up to 12th, but... Hey ho, we have to keep plugging along as uh, a couple of players uh, look to want more game time. Perot, I'm just not sold on him anymore. Richards started that game uh, for Fo against Fulham instead of Lodi, who uh, was injured, I think. Uh, he had a five-day injury. And I just prefer Richards over Perot. So um, Perot, I just can't see him get much game time. Again, we're in the January transfer window, so if anyone wants to come in for a bid, 
I probably will accept it, but I'm not going to put him off for transfer. I don't want to cause any upsets. As we uh, prepare for our Carabao Cup semi-final, like I said earlier in the episode, this is the stage where we fell to Leeds, eventual winners Leeds. We won the first leg at Allen Road 3-2 and then we lost at home in the second leg. I think it was 3-1 we lost. So we lost by a goal um, overall on aggregate. That second leg was very frustrating, I'll be honest. Leeds came out uh, all guns blazing and they battered us in that first leg. Uh, sorry, in the first half of the second leg. They went on to win the competition, but still, it was a very good chance for us to uh, reach the final. And, and so is this, you know, the, you look at the other leg, Man, Man United and Arsenal, we've definitely dodged a bullet there. No offence to Palace or um, Roy Hodgson's side, but this is definitely the tie you would want out of the three. Uh, going into the game, looking at the sides, we made nine changes. Only Taiwo and Victor keep their places from their side that drew at Fulham. Jack Butland still in net playing his former side Crystal Palace. Butland will be my cup goalie until until I reach the final. If I reach the final, Butland plays and then I would, would play Henderson in the final because I want to play my best goalie, you know. I know Butland's got us there, but anyway, we'll, we'll tackle that hurdle if we get there. Early chance um, for the hosts, uh, a header that uh, the ball, ball bobbled around in the box, then a header went just wide. For Tyro Awanyi, this man is just on fire right now. 16 minutes in, gives us a 1-0 lead. A, a beautiful half volley, by the way. Absolutely love this finish. Johnson, I think it was Johnson with a nice ball over. And uh, Taiwo with an exquisite half volley past Quater. The uh, keeper had no chance. This is such a nice angle. Beautiful finish. Such a difficult technique. And we lead the semi-final 1-0. And I think that was his fourth goal in three cup game so we've actually lent on Taiwo quite a lot in this competition and uh, he's been he's been massive for us uh, Henderson, uh sorry Butler would have to come up with a big save before a uh, Guaita himself would have to come up with a big save keeping the score at one that was 31 minutes in Taiwo again having an effort and then Guaita oh, man I'll tell you I'll tell you right now this guy was so frustrating he was saving everything yes the first shot went in from Taiwo but I mean look at that Point blank save from a one year. I thought he was offside, but he was on. And that's three incredible saves from Guaita in the first half, keeping his side in it. Going into the second half, normal service resumed. Benjamin Farmer, the youngster, put through on goal. Guaita denies him again. Taiwo with a great look from the edge of the box, 51 minutes in. But again, it was saved. When we did beat Guaita, uh, Ferguson was on the line to clear. And uh, the score remains one. And you know how these stories go. If you miss your chances, you miss your chances, you don't capitalise, you will be punished. And 56 minutes in, uh, Jean-Philippe Mateta has equaled for the Eagles in a game where they have been absolutely nowhere near scoring. They equalise through their first shot because that is what the AI is like at this level. They are clinical and you have to take your chances. Uh, normal, like We would continue battering uh, the Palace defence. Uh, Taiwo Awani hit the bar. And then Johnson would hit, uh, would force Great into a great save, but Brennan Johnson would not be denied for a second time. 20 minutes to go, and the Welshman gives us a 2 1 lead. And uh, just to um, steer off from uh, the game for a second, I think Brentford, um, obviously the transfer window is now opened in real life. Brentford apparently have made a £30 million bid for Brennan Johnson. Um, I think that would be a great addition for Brentford. I know he's a Nottingham Forest boy through and through, and they absolutely love him there. But I think that would be a nice step up for uh, Johnson. I think he would do well on a side like uh, Brentford. Let me know in the comments, do you think he should go to Brentford if the rumours are true? Uh, anyway, going back to the game, more saves from Greater. This guy honestly made save after save. Um, but with five minutes to go, we would get that killer third goal. Obviously, this is not a one-off affair. This is a two-legged semi-final, so nothing is decided tonight. But Tangi Ndombele, his third, his third goal of the season, and it's a nice finish at that, would give us that two-goal cushion going to Selhurst Park, and I would feel very, very comfortable with that lead. Uh, Benjamin Farmer with a nice back heel assist. Although, saying that, we weren't going to Selhurst Park with a 3-2 lead. Um, again, Palace just clinical. You know, I think they had two shots in this game and scored twice. Like, that is the level we're at. It's so frustrating. I, th I think I checked the stats at full time as well. Their expected goals were like 0 0.6. Just outrageous. And they've scored twice. And once again, for the second season in a row, we win the first leg 3-2. But it's still all to play for in the second leg. I'm very frustrated because that, that third goal from us... That two goal cushion, I was very happy with, and we definitely deserved it. But now we're going back to to uh, East London with just a one goal lead. 
is you know it's still a lead you have to be happy with that but it's very frustrating Guaita made eight saves in the game as well which is just a joke the guy was just on it he was absolutely on it as we um respond to a few players here wanting some game time Benjamin Farmer telling us that he could play anywhere which we know Benjamin you're an abs you're absolutely Mr Versatile you are class and you will be playing wherever we need you to play anyway heading into the third and final game of the episode it's another cup game uh, it is Everton at home. We beat the Toffees just, I think it was about nine days ago, actually. We've played them, well, this will be the second time playing them in this month of January. We beat them 3-0 at home. That was Nico Williams' debut, the Spaniard, obviously. That was his debut. He got an assist in that game. Uh, we make nine changes to the side that uh, beat Palace. Uh, Pats were a very strong team, actually. Sian, Cobb and Butland, the only uh, players that remain in the side. Butland, like I said, is my cup goalie until I reach a final. Uh, but until then, he will be between the sticks. So, yeah, just Sian, Cobb and Butland keeping their places. Apart from that, it's a very strong lineup. I wanted to um, get through this cup round. Um, I know we normally rotate in the cup, but uh, we had a week, in, I think, until the next game, until uh, West Brom away in the league. So I could afford to play a strong team, and we played a, a slightly weaker team against um, Crystal Palace. So... The boys were fit. Anyway, going into the game, Everton would take an early 1-0 lead. A very nice finish from uh, Almeida underneath Jack Butland. And then we would just get to work peppering, uh, I think, a Serena in goal for Everton. Um, Burton Diaz hitting the post as well. A very good chance for him there. And then 43 minutes in, the game would take a turn. Andros Townsend, the England vet, diving in on Harry Maguire. And he receives his marching orders. He receives a straight red. And uh, Everton, they may be a goal up, but they are now a man down and the advantage lies with us. Well, going into the second half, we would try and press the issue, but actually Everton, it was Everton who had the next two chances and they were golden chances as well. The former Wolf striker, Kaladic, I think that's how you pronounce it. He has two guilt ed chances. Bartland saves both times, keeping us in the game. And then from then on, I was like, we are not losing this game. We are definitely not losing to 10 men, okay? So we turned it around. Tiliska had a great chance. He he put it wide, but then the Brazilian would get on the score sheet. Nice pass from Sayankov and Anderson Tiliska gets us on the score sheet with just 18 minutes to go, keeping it tight. Um, and then I felt like after that goal went in, we would just complete the turnaround. And Steph Peters, who has been on our books but has only a handful of appearances, we've uh, we've put him into the side. To, uh, we sorry, he was a sub. He came on as a sub, and he would get his first goal for Forrest and what a goal it was as well top corner one of those ones that just seemed to stay in the air for ages it wasn't like a bullet effort but it definitely went into the stanchion the, the postage stamp as they call it and he would uh, turn over the lead for us and we would lead 2-1 and then uh, deep into injury time Brennan Johnson would get his goal as well just to rubber stamp the victory so it's uh, a come from behind victory against Everton. We were 1-0 down early doors but we scored three goals in the last 17 minutes against 10 men Granted, yes, to complete the turnaround and win this game 3-1 and to put us into the next round of the FA Cup. So we seem to actually be doing really well in the cup competitions. I wish our form was this consistent in the league as well. But, you know, it's all we can try and do. We're now into the next round of the FA Cup. Looking forward to seeing who we get there. Arthur Whitehead's uh, two-year loan deal is confirmed and then we reject another bid for Nico Williams, from this time from Leicester. We reject that as well. And in the fourth round of the FA Cup, you will see us play Fulham at home. And you will see that in the next episode, actually. That is uh, coming up as the third game in the episode. But that will be it for today's episode. It's another unbeaten episode. It wasn't 100% like the last episode. Two wins and a draw across all competitions. But there's six games now undefeated in all comps. You know, are we turning, a, are we turning the tide? Who knows? If you think we can reach top four, let me know in the comments. As always, if you're enjoying the series, drop it a like and I'll catch you on the next episode very soon.